All right, so we got our game board set up. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is actually create Pac-Man. We're just going to create a player game object and we're going to want to make him move. First, we need to add a child and we're going to set this to Pac-Man sprite. Add a sprite renderer. Go into our sprites. And we're just going to drag Pac-Man left into this section. Now we want to make sure that Pac-Man, oh also make sure that the transform for the sprite is 0, 0, 0. So we want to make sure that Pac-Man is able to easily fit inside of these areas. So let's bring the scale down a little bit, maybe 0 0.8. That's still a bit too big. Uh, 0 0.7 might be a bit better. 0 0.7 looks a little better if we click game. Uh, it looks like he's fitting right there. If he ends up uh, looking like he's going through a bit of a wall in some places, you can just uh, decrease the scale by a small margin. Okay, so now we're going to add two scripts. One of them is going to be our player controller. And another one is going to be our movement controller. So, you might be wondering, why are we adding two scripts? Why don't we just have one? Well, basically, we're going to have a script called movement controller. And that script's purpose is going to be to move the player from node to node. And the player controller, its purpose is going to be to tell the movement controller what direction we want to move in. So the reason why we have this separated into two separate scripts is because we're going to be reusing the movement controller with the ghosts because they also are going to be moving from node to node. But their method of moving is going to be different. Our player controller is going to uh, get a direction using the arrow keys. Our enemy controller for the ghosts are going to determine dire the direction using AI that we're going to get into later. And then they're going to send that information to the movement controller so that the movement controller can essentially just be the same for both. So let's go into the movement controller. We're going to create a few variables here. Our first one is going to be our current node. This is the node that we're going to always be moving towards. So then we're going to have another variable for our speed. Then we're going to have a variable for our direction. And then we're going to have a variable for our last moving direction. Now the difference between these two things, the last moving direction is the direction you last moved in, the direction is the direction we want to move in now. And it's important to differentiate this because if we are right here for example and we set our direction to up, that's perfectly valid. We can set our direction to up. But when it goes into the movement controller um, and it goes to update our position, it's going to say we can't do that. So because we can't move up, let's set it to the last moving direction that we know worked which would be uh, either left or right. So the direction is basically just saying like, hey, we want to move in this direction, which is going to be directly mapped to your arrow keys. So I can hit up right now, uh, which would set our direction up eventually, but we would have logic that says we can't do that and rely on the last moving direction as a fail safe. So now we're going to go into our update function and this is going to call get called like 60 times per second. So it's going to happen a lot. This is going to be where we say move to the center of our current node. But we also need to determine what uh, the next node we can move to is. So we're going to reference our node controller. We're going to just create current node controller and we're going to set it equal to our current node dot get component node controller. So I'm going to explain this a little bit better. You can see that that's going to pop up here. Okay, so the first node that we want to start off on is going to be this one. So we're just going to go to Pac-Man for a second and lock this inspector so that this doesn't change when we click a different game object. That way we can click this node and drag it into current node. So now what we're going to say, we're going to create this node controller, current node controller, which is going to equal uh, the node controller script or component on our current node. And since our current node is this one right here, it's going to get reference to this node controller. 
uh, and now because we have reference to the node controller, we're going to be able to know what directions we're allowed to move in. So uh, once we have reference to our node controller, we are going to move towards that node. So we're going to say transform dot position equals vector two dot move towards, and we're going to move from our current position to our current node dot transform dot position. And we are going to do it um, at the speed of our speed variable. And then we're going to multiply speed by time dot delta time. And all that means is that the speed of Pac-Man is going to be based on real world time and not based on how fast that person's computer is running. Because update runs more when, if a person's computer runs better. So if your computer is really, really, really good, it might be able to run this update 120 times per second, which means it would be moving at 120 times the speed. We don't want that. We want every person's computer to operate under the exact same code regardless of its speed. So instead of um, doing it by computer hardware, we're just going to do it by real world time. Then we're going to ask if we've reached the center of the node. Because once we reach the center of the node, that's when we're going to figure out the next node that we're allowed to move towards. So figure out if we're at the center of our current node. This is really easy. We're just going to say if transform.position.x equals current node dot transform dot position dot x and transform.position.y equals current node dot transform dot position dot y. Then we're going to need to get the next node from our node controller using our current direction. So first off, I know we're going to be jumping back and forth a little bit. Uh, there's really no way to avoid that, but we're going to hop into our node controller and we're going to create another function. And we're going to say public get node from direction, which is going to send a nice string direction. And we're going to say if direction equals, oh, whoops, we need to type in public game object. Cool. We're going to say if direction equals left and can move left, then we're going to return node left else if direction equals right and can move right return node right else if direction equals up and can move up return node up else if direction equals down and can move down return node down, else return null. So basically if the person sends in left, they say we want to move left, um, and we can move left, then we're going to return our left node. If we send in left and we can't move left, it's going to keep checking these ifs and eventually just end up returning null. So if, we're, if we return null, that means we're telling our movement controller you're not allowed to move uh, in this direction that you're asking for. So now we are going to say game object new node equals current node controller dot get node from direction direction. So if new node does not equal null, so if we can move in the desired direction. Then we're going to set our current node to our new node. And we are going to set our last moving direction to be our direction that we entered because we were allowed to go in that direction. Else, if our node was null, then that means we were not allowed to go into the entered direction. So we press the up arrow key and we're not allowed to go up. We are going to set our direction back to our last moving direction. And then we're going to see if we can keep going in our last moving direction. So let's say we're going left and we hit up and we can't go up. Um, it's going to say you can't go up. Can we still keep going left? 
so if we can't move in desired direction try to keep going in the last moving direction so then we're going to basically call the same thing we're going to say new node equals current node controller dot get node from direction direction which now equals our last moving direction and then we're going to say if new node does not equal null then current node equals new node and that should work now uh, the only problem is is right now we're not actually updating our direction so we're going to have to do that in our player controller but you can sort of see now how this will work the exact same thing for our ghosts we send in our direction that we want to update in our movement controller and then our movement controller just sees if it can move in that direction and if it can it moves so we're going to have another function public void set direction this is going to be called from the player controller and the player controller is going to send in the direction that they want so we're just going to say direction equals new direction and just change this up here to be new direction so we're going to send the direction in from our player controller and we're going to update our direction so now if we go back to unity we can find our player controller and double click it to open it in visual studio okay so luckily this is really easy we are going to type in movement controller movement controller and then we're going to say on start movement controller equals get component movement controller and remember all get component does is it grabs another component that's in the current game object so this player has a transform a player controller and a movement controller right now so if we're in our player controller and we get component movement controller our player controller can now access all of the public things inside of our movement controller so for example we can say if input dot get key key code dot left arrow movement controller dot set direction left and then we're going to copy this four times right arrow right up arrow up down arrow down now let's actually turn on the game and see if it works okay so this is actually nice we're able to fluently move you're gonna notice a tiny issue though um, if we try and reverse really quickly it's a little bit laggy and the reason why is because you have to get to the center of a node before you can transition to another node um, this is done on purpose so that if we get we can't get halfway in between here and then start moving up we have to get to the center before we can move up however um, we're going to make an exception for if you reverse directions because if you reverse directions we already know for sure you can go there because you're just reversing to the place that you were already so we are going to go back to our movement controller and we are going to declare a new variable right about here right above the if statement we're going to say bool reverse direction equal to false and now we just want to check if we're reversing direction and this is really easy because we know the direction that we moved in last which is our last moving direction and we know the direction we want to go in now which is our direction so if they're opposite we're reversing direction so we're going to do an if statement here and it's going to look a little bit different this is where we usually put our conditions but we're going to have multiple conditions so we're going to enter here now we're just going to separate these conditions so we're going to say if direction equals left and last moving direction equals right or direction equals right and last moving direction equals left or direction equals up and last moving direction equals down 
or direction equals down and last moving direction equals up then we're gonna say reverse direction equals true okay so now we know if we've reversed our direction and we are going to add an extra bracket here and then onto the end and then right in the middle of them we're gonna say or reverse direction so if we're in the center of the node or we're reversing direction, find the new node that we're allowed to go to. So, oh, it looks like I have another error. Oh, I forgot to finish off the bracket up top. Cool. Okay, so now if we reload, that should work. As you can see, I can reverse very easily and the movement seems fluent. There doesn't seem to be any bugs. So I'm not able to go through a wall or anything like that. The next thing that we're going to need to do is get these warp points working. Because as you can see, we just get caught. And the reason why is because there's no more nodes to the left. So it's basically saying we can't go that way.